Stanford University. Professor Selim. 
He was about three when he discovered his passion for painting. And a few years later, he decided that he wanted to become an artist. Contrary to the common ethos of Persian families, who would usually try to dissuade the children from their life in the arts, Sekhun parents encouraged him to follow his bliss. He finished his high school in Tehran. He was a good student, but his preoccupation and his passion were for paintings. About that time, uh, and much to the consternation of the clergy, a new college was built in Iran for uh, arts. The building of that college was in the story Mar Seminary. The college was the brainchild of a minister of culture at the time, Ismail Mirad. But the secularism policies of Reza Shah had allowed the government to evict the mullahs from the seminary and put a modern art college in its place. Where mullahs used to teach Shiite Sharia, French professors were now talking about Modigliani and modernism. The legendary Monsieur André Godard ran the school. The language of instruction was French. <coughs> Among the professors was the famed scholar and artist Maxime Serot, the author of the classic study of Karwan Saras in Iran. Sehun stayed at the school for four years and earned a degree in architecture. At about that time, Iran was undergoing a profound set of changes. Reza Shah was deposed, and the Mullahs, suddenly emboldened by Mohammad Reza Shah's new conciliatory policies, demanded their old seminary back. They got their wish, and the College of Fine Arts was left homeless. It moved to the basement of the Faculty of Engineering at Tehran University. Sehun had by then shown his precocious talent in a surprisingly large number of fields in the visual arts. He had experimented with abstract expressionism, calligraphy, pencil drawings, and had even pioneered a new technique of using felt to create artwork. He had won a number of prestigious awards and competitions as a student. When the Iranian government decided to give him a medal to commemorate the Tehran Conference of 1943, Sehun, though still an undergraduate student at Honor Cadet, won the competition to design. Even more impressive was Sehun's success in winning two of the most important architectural competitions of that time. The Iranian Association of Historic Monuments decided to build a memorial to Ferdowsi, Iran's answer to Homer. Sehun won the award with a design that drew its inspiration from the classical monumentality of the pre-Islamic Persian architecture. This was the harbinger of a paradigm change in the Iranian aesthetic sensibilities that was to bloom in full two decades later. The second uh, design of his that uh, won uh, the award in, in that period was his monument to Ibn Sina, known to the West as Abi Sina. Iran's great Aristotelian uh, philosopher. Although Seyfun had won the French government's scholarship to go and study abroad, he was reluctant to go. He was understandably keen on making sure that his Edmissino project saw its completion. Seyfun ultimately went to Paris when his mentor, Godard, assured him that if the money was ready for the Edmissino project, he would call him back. In Paris, Sehun embarked on his work at college and uh, completed his work within five, four years. In 1948, another piece of serendipity helped Sehun. About the time he finished his course of study, he heard from Godard that the necessary funds for the Sina monument had finally been procured. He returned to Iran and immediately established his own firm. While completing the memorial, he also began accepting private commissions. Godard, who was now the dean of Tehran University's College of Art and Architecture, invited Sehun to join the faculty, and thus began Sehun's long and distinguished academic career. In November 2005, about a hundred of his students, many of them Iran's most eminent architects of today, gathered from all over the world 
in Dubai to celebrate Sehun's more than 50 years of teaching and mentoring. Sehun's most important contribution as an artist, architect, and teacher was his role in the emergence of a new kind of cultural and aesthetic modernity in Iran. In the mid 20th century, as trained architects began to arrive in Iran from the West, they designed buildings that emulated in their fundamental architectural language the work of Western architects. Whether they trained in France and followed the Beaux-Arts tradition, or in America where they were inspired by the lives of Frank Lloyd Wright or Philip Johnson, the impulse was to imitate the West. But by the late 50s, in nearly every aesthetic domain, a new vision of modernity was beginning to emerge. In the field of architecture, Sehun was one of the most important pioneering figures. In 1961, he became the Dean of the College of Arts and Architecture at Tehran University. His tenure lasted seven years. He used the period to bring about important changes in the curriculum at the college. One of his favorite subjects was the traditional Iranian architecture. He taught, he taught a class on the subject. His lectures, as well as his drawings of those great buildings, have been published in French and in Persian. In his own mind, his most important contribution to architecture was to inaugurate the practice of requiring all Iranian students at the university to travel throughout the country and visit all the new buildings in villages and towns marking grand monuments of the past, as well as simple adobe buildings of today. He bought a special bus for these trips and often accompanied the students on their journeys of discovery. After the first year, he also invited an official of Iran's Department of Antiquities, and as a result, many, many important and but hitherto ignored buildings were placed on the list of historic sites and marked for preservation. While Seikun continued his teaching and pursued his work at the architectural uh, firm, designing at least 150 private homes, two cinemas, several factories, and many other buildings, he was also active as a painter. By the mid-1970s, he had achieved an international reputation. His works had been shown in Iran and around the world, including an exhibit at the University of Massachusetts where his paintings hung alongside those of Picasso and Dali. Not only was art his vocation and avocation, but his private emotional life was also inseparable from the realm of art. In 1952, he married Masumegi Mushimi Sehun. She was an accomplished painter herself. She went on to establish the Sehun Gallery and for in the next three decades, the gallery remained the preeminent house for exhibiting modern art in Iran. Many of today's most cherished painters had their first exhibits at the Seigun Gallery, people like Zohra Vesegheri and Hossein Zendabudi. With his work as an architect and an artist of myriad accomplishment, with uh, his paintings, the name Sehun has come to conjure modernism and a refined aesthetic sense in the minds of most Armenian Iranians. It is in recognition of all of these facts that this year uh, he is the winner of the Vita Prize in Arts. Before asking Professor Neymar to come and uh, introduce Vita uh, Garyavari, who needs little introduction, I want to thank several people who have worked tirelessly to make this evening and the reception that follows upstairs possible. First and foremost, I must thank Mr. Sam Sherpa, who embodies Zen calm in the eye of the storm, any storm, and whose grace, hospitality, and efficiency has been one of the greatest assets of the Iranian Studies program. I would also like to thank our student interns who have given selflessly of their time even on the eve of the exam week, to help us tonight. Ms. Jordan Limoges, Mr. Michael Petticoat, Mr. Mark Raypott of the ICA helped us with the design of the posters and the evening program. Thank you all for coming, and I ask 
Professor Neymar, the new leader of the ICA, to come and uh, say a few words about ITA. Thank you, Alice. Uh, welcome to all of you. Uh, it is, gives me great pleasure uh, to welcome you here on behalf of Stanford University, uh, Richard Saller, who is the Dean of Humanities and Sciences, and my boss, and the Division of International Comparative and Area Studies, of which I am the director. We are all enormously proud of the accomplishments uh, of the Iranian Studies uh, program at Stanford, and let me start by expressing my personal gratitude uh, to its founding director, Abbas Malani, who's done an amazing job, as you know, uh, in bringing Iran, its history, its culture, and politics to the center of campus uh, attention. Uh, thank you, Abbas. It's my privilege and pleasure tonight to introduce Ms. Pita Daryabari, a woman who I have learned needs little introduction to most of you in the audience. She's one of the most highly regarded and respected members of the Iranian diaspora community. Pita uh, Daryabari has been a generous donor, not just to Stanford, but to many philanthropic causes in the United States and around the world. She's the founding director of the Pars Foundation, which was the first organization to provide legal guidance and support to Iranian refugees coming uh, to the United States. She's helped build schools in distant places like Palestine and Afghanistan. Her endowment at Stanford's Iranian Studies program has allowed us to expand into the realm of arts and literature and I should add that Iranian Studies itself at Stanford uh, was launched as a consequence of the visionary leadership and generous endowment of Hamid and Christina Mogadam. Uh, uh, Hamid is with us here uh, tonight, and I'm glad to be able to welcome him back to Stanford and express our gratitude uh, for his support. Uh, the Beta Prize, uh, which we're here tonight to celebrate, uh, is a critical part of the Daryabari uh, endowment and has allowed us to bring to our campus some of the luminaries of Iranian arts and letters in the past uh, five years. From the outset, uh, Bita has encouraged us to dedicate a good part of our efforts to affording the Iranian community in the area uh, a chance to share in the works of art and scholarship presented here on campus. Her humility and humanity, her love of the arts, her pride in the rich Persian heritage, her tireless desire to share that legacy with citizens of her new country, make her an exemplar of wise compassion, compassionate and prudent uh, philanthropy. Thus, it's with great pleasure that I ask Ms. Bita Daryabari to come to the stage and present the award to tonight's winner. Thank you, Professor Neymar, for your incredible, kind, and generous introduction. I truly don't deserve all the remarks and uh, credits you gave me. Thank you very much. Um, I think we need uh, Professor Sehun to design a little bit higher table for me because <laughs> as I'm aging, yeah, it seems like I, I won't be able to read these things. I have to bring it up. <laughs> Maybe I need glasses. Um, well, greetings and welcome. Um, I would like to begin my remarks in Farsi, the language and the culture that we are gathered here to celebrate. با درود و سلام خدمت حضار و مهمانان عزیز به مراسم امشب ما خوش آمدید. این پنجمین باری است که در چنین مراسم پرقدری شرکت می کنیم و هر بار برای بزرگ داشته زندگی و کارهای یکی از بزرگان فرهنگ ما گرده هم آمدیم. وقتی پنج سال پیش این برنامه را در این دانشگاه شروع کردم در راهی رفتم 
که بیشتر سنگ اول آن را حمید و کریستینا مقدم گذاشته بودند. هیچ کار بزرگی را یک نفر انجام نمیتواند داد و ارائه تصویر دقیق از ایران و میراث فرهنگی آن کاری به راستی بزرگ است. امشب در اینجا گرده هم آمدیم تا زندگی پربار یکی از بزرگترین معماران و نقاشان ایران را عرج بشناسیم. خوشحالم که میبینم برخی از برخی دانشگاه های دیگر هم در راه مشابه گام گذاشتن و جریان شناخت و شناساندن زبان و فرهنگ و ادب و فکر ایران را آغاز کردند. باید دست به دست هم بدهیم و این بار ایران را به منزل برسانیم. حداقل مسئولیت ما در برابر ایران و فرزندان ما این است که تصویری در کار بنای فرهنگ و زبان ما در اختیار آنان و همه کسانی که در این مملکت زندگی می کنند بگذاریم. برای من مایه خود بسی خوشبختی است که امسال هم چون دیگر سالهای که برندگان این جایزه یعنی کسانی چون سیمین بهبهانی، گلی ترقی، بهرام بیزایی، محمد رضا شجریان که هر یک در بخش از این میراس پیش کسفت بودن و مهمان عزیز امشب ما استاد سیمون هم خود سرامد پیش کسفتان پیش کسفتان معماری و هنرهای زیبا بوده و هست. خیلی مشکرم که آقای سیمون تشریف آوردین امشب و در خدمت ما هستین. اگه اجازه بدین برقیه که صحبتم را به انگلیسی ادامه میدم. It gives me special pleasure to welcome you all to the fifth annual celebration of Beta Prize in Persian Letters. From the beginning of my work with Stanford, Dean Seller and past directors of, of the ICA division, where my endowment lies, have invariably offered their support. I'm proud of the work that we have been able to do um, to make Stanford now one of the most vibrant and respected centers for the study of Persian culture, language, Persian culture, language, and literature. And we all know this couldn't be possible without the generosity uh, of Hamid and Christina Mogadam. Thank you, Hamid John. And also, Dr. Milani, you have been and continue to be an extraordinary gift, visionary, and bold leader of our, of our community. Thank you for the grace and wisdom, elegance and power, and care and love that you bring to our Iranian studies program at Stanford. Thank you, Professor Sehun, for accepting our invitation. If you take a quick look, at, look back at the winners, it confirms that the fact that they were each a luminary in their fields. And this year's winner, Professor Sehun, is no exception. From my early years in Iran, the Sehun name was synonymous with the finest traditions in art and architecture, both passions of my life. Gabriel Sehun, was where every major Iranian artist aspired to exhibit his or her works. Professor Sehun himself, a highly innovative and creative painter, was best known for the revolution he helped bring to Persian architecture. His fusion of modernism and tradition, his insistence of teaching to his students the magic and mystery of Persian traditional architecture, while always requiring mystery um, always requiring of them familiarity with latest developments in modernism elsewhere in the world. And finally, some of his beautiful, enduring, unmistakably modern and traditional Persian designs for monuments to past Persian poets and philosophers, his tireless work to educate two generations of Iran's um, best architects, all combining to make him yet another stellar addition to our past winners of this award. If Simin Ben Bahani, our first winner, showed the defiant and delicate poetry and presence of women in today's Iranian society, and if our last winner, Mr. Bahram Beizai, embodies the best in Persian theater and cinema, painter and educator and architect, Mr. Professor Sehun, is uh, another person that his um, record, his, all of his work, all of his impressive accomplishments shows that he could be, he is our next um, prize winner. I would like to invite him to join me here to receive his prize and tell us about the rich and enriching life he has led. Professor Chairman.
بفهمن حرف رو باید بکنم معماری که خوشبختانه 
اون موقع کادر تعلیماتی دانشکده همه تقریبا فرانسوی بودن و چیزی آورده بودن که از نوگرایی که بنده تشنه شدم و آرزو شده شدم و دنبالش بودم بیشتر تشنگی من رفت میکردم و استادا یعنی دانشگاه تقریبا فرانسه زبان بود ما از اون موقع عادت کردیم به زبان فرانسه استادی بنده انتخاب کردم مکسیم سیرو بود که امشب به یاد او من این صحبت ها رو میکنم که خیلی چیزها فرا گرفتم ازش و این محاولی که از زمان احمد شاه در بنده زنده شده بود در دوران تحصیل دانشگاهی خیلی یه زیاده از حد تشتید رو شد داشته شد و بعد هم که انتخاب شدم برای اینکه برم به دورت به مملکت فرانسه اونجا هرک میره مطالعات بکنم که جای خود داره این است که این نوع آوری و مدرنیزم در وجود بنده رشد بده کرد و بسید به جایی که و خودم چیزهای کارهایی تر از در حقیقت تحویل جامعه دادم که اینها نه تنها در ایران شد در دنیا به نظیر بودم تعریف از خود نفر باید و اون معماری بود که از طریق سمبولیزم یا نمادین زندگی نامه و تخصص کسان رو که برای شما یاد بود برای یاد بود می ساختم اینها رو به نحوی به نمایش بگذارم این،, این خیلی علاوه بر مدر نیست این تکمیل کنندش بود دیگه جناب پروفیسور میلانی سنگ تمام برای بنده گذاشتن که ازشون تشکر میکنم و بعد بیتا خانم عزیز، بیتا بانو، بیتا بانو فرهنگ ایران بنده رو خجارت زده کردن و نمیدونم چجوری سباز خزاری بکنم که حق مطلب رو داده باشم امیدوارم که همیشه در این راه موفق باشید و اون کاری که شروع کردید به نحوه کامل انجام بدید I was born during the reign of Ahmad Shah. Uh, it was in, uh, in the midst of his uh, reign, and I was born in Tehran. Uh, one of the, the most important goals of the Constitutional Revolution was modernization and modernity in every facet of life. Uh, and from my childhood, this kind of evolution, this kind of desire for change became uh, part of my existence. Uh, when I was a child, uh, we used to uh, lay a cloth on the floor and eat on it with our hands. Gradually, uh, forks and knives appeared. This was one step forward. Then the piece of, piece of cloth uh, was transformed onto a table. Another evolution, another modernization. Uh, the traditional form of sleeping around uh, heat, source of heat, the corsi, uh, gave place to uh, heaters. Heaters that began with coal, and then eventually we learned about the central heating system. Each of these were part of the modernization process that Iranian society was experiencing. And it was thus that modernization, searching for the new, became uh, an essential part of uh, my life. In, in a way, it made it inevitable for me to become a modernist. I finished high school and elementary school in Tehran and began the university. I was born into a family that was 100% steeped in music. My father, my grandparents were all music musicians. And there was music in our house constantly. 
every one of everybody in the house play some instruments. Everyone in the house learned to play this instrument from some other member of the house. We never had a coach that was not a member of the family. Many of these names, many of these family members are renowned today as top musicians, prominent musicians of Iran. But in the midst of this long, old family of musicians, I was the only one who, from the age of three, decided that I did not want to become a musician, and I decided that I wanted to become a painter. I picked up uh, coal, and I began to blacken every white space that I could find in the house. And I must uh, thank my parents who let me, left me alone and allowed me to do uh, this uh, blackening of white spaces. Uh, when I uh, near the, the time when I had to go to the university, uh, I was uh, perplexed. I did not know how I could go to university that would uh, satisfy my craving for art. And as luck would have it, in that very year, when I kept uh, focusing on architecture and painting, uh, began its work. Uh, virtually every one of the teachers were French, and the language of instruction was French. And what they brought to me, and what they, what they brought to us, uh, was uh, modernism. I got more than my craving for this modernism. Uh, the person that I particularly took a liking to, the professor that I took a particular liking to, was Maxim Siro. He was my uh, professor. I learned a great deal from him, and I dedicate my comments tonight to his uh, memory. Uh, once I uh, received the fellow fellowship and went to uh, France to continue my education, uh, the spirit of modernism that I encountered there uh, only augmented what was already in me, this thirst for innovation. Uh, gradually, uh, once I returned to Iran, uh, I made some innovations of myself uh, in this modernism. I think I developed a style of modernist architecture that was not only unique in Iran, but may I, may I say uh, that it was unique in the world. In some of the monuments that I built, I used symbolism uh, to represent the life and work of the person for whom I was uh, building uh, that monument. Uh, I, I want to thank the uh, grand dame of Iranian culture, Bitahan. I wish you success. I hope that you will successfully uh, bring to fruition this uh, immense work that you have started. You also thank me for translating. <laughs> <laughs> موضوع بداه نوازی 
بی اندازه اهمیت داره در داشت نوت نبود سینه به سینه یاد گرفتم و دستگاه ها رو حفظ میکردم به ترتیبی که این این جالبه فرض میکنه یه دستگاه شور توی دستگاه شور از یکی از موسیقی دانها خواسته میشد که در یه جلسه یک آهنگی به نوازه بر حسب احساسی که در اون مجلس بهش دست میداد در شور کار خودش رو انجام میده اگر یه هفته بعد در یه مجلس دیگری باز قرار بود که در دست بای شور یه چیزی ایشون ارائه بده یه نقمه به نوازه اون شوری که در هفته پیش انجام داده با اون فرق بکنم یعنی به نسبت اون حال و هوایی که تغییر میکرد این هم فرق. یعنی بداهه به صورت بداهه فکر عبد میشون بعد این ارز به دست هم رسیده به ترتیبی که بداهه نگاری میکنم حالا در کتاب هم کسان یک کتاب بنده رو دیدن یا دارن مرزه فرمودید که در دو نوع کار این ارز رو عرضه کرد یکی در بیلیت های مترو پاریس که این بیلیت های مترو پاریس روش چند تا رقم یا یعنی چند تا عدد نوشته شده دو مثلا مال درجه دو یو دو تا یو وسط شکل تیره گذاشته شده مترو اتوبوس جاش نوشته شده روی این نوشته ها و این ارقا یه خط های من اضافه کردم یه شکلی در بردم نه اینکه پیشینم فکر رو خیلی زیاد بکنم خیلی با زمان کم این کار رو انجام دادم فکر میکنید که چند تا بیلیت مترو رو بنده به این ترتیب نقاشی کرده باشم رو روی بیلیت پونسد بیلیت و پونسد شکل مختلف این یک به اصطلاح ارسیه ایست که از بداهه نگاری بداهه نوازی موسیقی به دست نمیسیده یا اینکه اشخاص امضا میکنن امضا علیه به فارسی یا به انگلیسی یا به فرانسی و هرچی بنده روی این امضاها بدون اینکه به خود امضا دست دست بردی بزنم کاری بکنم اضافه کنم بیا خطم بیا روی خط امضا نه جدا از اون به تصدیبی که اون رو به صورت تکمیل در بیارم از حالت امضا در بیارم و یه شکلی درست کنم این هم باید یه چیزی در بیده یکی دو ازامت تا را انجام First of all, every time I begin to design anything, uh, some uh, music is playing in the background. Uh, this is part of what I have inherited from uh, this music uh, tradition. But there is another aspect that is very important in classical Persian music, and that is improvisation, the Dahan uh, Before there were notes, uh, people learn these different uh, constructs, these different dascars uh, uh, from uh, their masters. Uh, they had to learn it by heart. They had to memorize it. Uh, for example, if they played one of these dascars, shul, uh, depending on how they felt that night at the moment, uh, it would sound different. If they played the same structure, uh, the same uh, corner, uh, next week, the same person, in a different context, it would be a very different thing. This is what uh, improvisational uh, playing of music in Persian is. And uh, those of you who have seen my book will see how improvisation has become an essential part of my design. Let me give you a couple of examples. I have designed uh, some of the tickets for the French uh, underground. Uh, I had designed almost 500 of these uh, tickets. Uh, on them, there are some numbers, on them there are the lines, uh, the name of the lines, but then in a very improvisational uh, spirit with a few uh, lines, I had to uh, turn it into an artistic uh, work. And uh, this, I think, is uh, improvisation in the realm of design. 
Uh, another form of work that I have done is to take people's signatures and without uh, uh, interfering at all in their writing or without uh, crossing over into their mind. I have, you know, again, in a very improvisational spirit, uh, I have turned that signature into an independent design. I have done about 2,000 of these. <laughs> شما چه اصرایی داشتین که امشب که انقدر خوشیم ما Thank <laughs> you. 
میکنم من جواب هم بوده که اگر ما افتخاری در معماری اون داریم افتخار اون در این است که معماری اون نجام و اما اون موضوع شمعی که همان رو گرد کرده این مناظرمون هست ولی اون یکی نیست ما نمیدونیم اون تا چند روزه زیاد روی شده در معرفیش بند همونطور که عرض کردم علاوه بر مدرنیتی که در ایران در کارهای معماری انجام دادم و همینطور در نقاشی سر کردم که یک کارهایی کرده باشم کاری کردم که بالاتر از این باشه مدرنی تو هم باشه با توی علایزم خدمت رو ارز کردم که تو هم باشه با سمبولیزم یعنی با شیط ها و با اعداد اگر اعداد بشه پارد کرد بتونم زندگی یا ارز کنم که تخصص یا شخصیت افرادی رو که براشون این بنایی ها دیگه می سدن اینا رو نامه شد مثلا ارز بکنید که برای نادر نادر شاه نادر شاه یک فرد خیلی ساده بوده که شما در زندگیش اون تشریفات درباری رو اینا رو نمی بینید. من همه این هایی که می ساختم قبلا تاریخ زندگیشون رو به دقت مداره می کردم و بعد هم فکر می کردم که اونو مجسم بکنم نادر یا آدمی بوده که بی تکردف در صحنه جنگ حرکت می کرد نون و گوشتش رو به اقوان غذای زهرش یا شبش روی زین اصل به خود رو می رفته ولی این حرکت جهشیش برقرار بود آره از بنده میخوان که آرامگاهی برای نادر بزنم من باید این خسلت های خاص نادر رو یه جوری در کنم به گندنم اون این است که چهار آمه خاص رو بودم از من یکی خود تالار آرامگاهی دو تا موزه یکی موزه از تایی زمان نادر یکی موزه زمان از تایی ما قبل نادر و یکی هم مجسمه و پایه مجسمه نادر که جزء مهمتر عوامل این مهم مجموعه باشه تمام اینا روی سمبول رفته یک این است که ما سه جور خط داریم خط افقی دلیل بر آرامش و سکون و بیارکتی است خط عمودی دلیل بر پاورشایی و استقامه خط مورب دلیل بر جهشی و خط مورب رو انتخاب کردم برای ناده چون کارش کار جهشی اگر دقت کرده باشید پایه مجسمه و خود مجسمه این هر دوش تر هم بردش کار بند است هر دو در یه خط مورب می رو از اونجا قرنیز بزرگی که هر سنگش شونزه این در تون بزنشه این که میره بالا باز این هم مورب می رو. این یعنی نادر به خود آرامگاه که نگاه میکنیم یک پلان مربع داره و من اگر یک کسی دیگه بود به جای من آرامگاه رو میذاشت وسط مربع من نداشتم این کار رو دو تا دیوار دو تا موزه در به صورت دو زهنی که چسبید به همه انجام شده که مرفع وسط رو از دو طرف اقاطه کرده و دو طرف دیگه ستون بندی که آزاده من فکر کردم که نادر اینجا چند به جنگی داره یعنی سحنه جنگی در گوشه قرار بگیره که در پناه و دیوار ناظر به سحنه جنگ باشه ستون ها نماد سربازا باشن چه برای کار چه برای جنگ و نادر از اون گوشه در پناه و دیوار نادر و جنگ باشه و امثال این خیلی منطیده شده توی پناه های دیگه من این یک کار یه نوامده خاصی بود که برای فکر کنم که باید افتخار بکنم 
the gentleman who asked the question said, I uh, studied architecture, although I did not continue in that line of work. I'm very proud that uh, an architect has won such a, an award. Uh, but I have a question. Uh, our traditional uh, architecture has had some remarkable, uh, or allegedly remarkable, uh, buildings. One of them is called Menar Jumbon. These are two towers that parallel one another. And the story is that when one moves, the other also moves. That's why they are called the moving towers. Uh, the second is Hamam Mukashan, uh, Hamam Fin, and uh, it is alleged that the entire bathhouse was lit by one uh, candle. Uh, what have we done in modern architecture uh, that can be said to be equal in terms of its global significance and uniqueness to these two buildings? Uh, the answer was that in my buildings, uh, my effort has been so that they don't move. Uh, and I have to say that this is not the first time this question has been asked of me. Uh, at least 25 times people have asked me, particularly in Esfahan, uh, where uh, people wanted to know uh, about this mirage of And I told them that uh, my effort uh, and my pride is that my buildings don't move, don't shake. Uh, as to the uh, story of the bathhouse, I think there is a considerable amount of exaggeration uh, on that. Uh, my modernism, uh, as well in architecture as in my painting, is that I have tried to combine this uh, architectural modernism with a form of symbolism. Uh, I have tried to make the spirit, uh, the expertise of the people that I'm uh, making a building about, a monument about, represented in a symbolic form in that monument. Let me give you an example. Uh, they asked for a design for another shop. Another shop was an Iranian king. He, was, he lived a very simple life. He was averse to courtly grandiosity. Uh, before making any of my buildings, I deeply studied the lives and the habits of the people for whom I'm making the, this one. I learned that another shop was a man who lived a simple life. Uh, during the war period, uh, he, he ate on his horse. He ate very simply a piece of bread, so he, <coughs> and he ate it as he moved. In essence, he was constantly in motion. Uh, I wanted to build a monument that would reflect this uh, motion. Uh, there were four elements in this building. Uh, there was a hall, there were two museums, uh, one arms of the Nader period, one arms that belonged to the Nader period before the Nader period, and a big uh, sculpture and its base uh, representing Nader. I tried to use symbolism in all of these uh, four elements. We have in architecture essentially three kinds of lines. Uh, a horizontal line that uh, symbolizes uh, calm and uh, motionlessness. Uh, uh, the perpendicular line that represents uh, security and a curved line that uh, represents uh, uh, movement. Uh, in designing the northern building, I used the curved line, uh, and I used this curved line even in stones that uh, each weigh 16 tons. Uh, and when I was trying to uh, build the uh, place of his burial, uh, I did not want it to become a simple square as most burial places are. I wanted the place of his burial to represent uh, his spirit, the warrior spirit, the movement. Spirit. That's why uh, there are two uh, pillars, and uh, he is in one corner. It is as if he is standing in that corner. The pillars represent the soldiers, and it is as if, uh, even in death, he is witnessing the field of battle.
کسانی که آرایی رو دست بردن کردن بفهم به عنوان استاد مسلم نقاشی در رابطه با کامپیوتر که در دنیا شاهد اون هستیم به نظر شما به صور جهانی امکان پذیر میبینیم اگه امکان پذیره نقاشی میتونه رولی بازی کنه و آیا ممکنه یکی از بهترین اثراتی که دارید در رابطه با سر جهانی برای ما نام ببرید که به خودی خودی پیامی برای وانه سیاهی دو نتیز بودن انسان در دنیا شما به هم مربوط میشین فقط در مورد ایران فکر کنید کافی نیست در سر جهانی که شما پیامی نقاشی ها به ما میتونه بده یا اگر همچین نقاشی دارید اجازه تکسیر شونی که به جهانی ها معرفی بشه بدون چه که هست اگر این مثلا همچین سوالی ببایید شما رو معرفی نمیشه وارد بنده بگم میکنم که رزومی نداشت که یک کار به خصوصی برای صلح جهانی بخواد انجام بگیره بنده فکر کنم که یک اثر هنری تمامش صلح این این توجه داشته باشیم ما که واقعا یک اثر هنری اینجوره یه نقاشی که میکنیم و هر جوری که میخواد باشه یک آرامش و صلح و سلامی به انسان دست میده با دیدنش با مواجهه باش که یه احتیاجی نداره که سوژه یا اون موضوع بخواد جواب مطلب رو بده خب بعضی هم سعی کردن که کاره اینجوری بکنم یه سمبول از نظر سمبولیست میشه بعد هم بعضی از کارا ولی اون کاری که واقعا برای این مفهوم قابل عرضه باشه ندارم کردم خدمتون تبدیل بکنم ولی همینقدر از میکنم که تا صلح و سلام و صفا نباشه یک کار هنری اونجوری که باید خود نمایی نخواهد کرد و راه نخواهد شد The question was uh, again uh, the gentleman began by uh, showing uh, indicating his gratitude that uh, Professor Seymour is here and thanking uh, Peter for organizing events like this uh, and the question was uh, whether uh, he, uh, Professor Seymour, thinks that painting can paint, have any role in creating world peace. Uh, it is not enough for paintings to be about Iran. Uh, there is a unity of humanity, and uh, painters must not just think about Iran. And if he thinks that the painters have such a role, is there painting of him, Professor Seymour, who he thinks uh, does this job of showing the unity of humanity. And if there is such a painting, uh, will he permit us to uh, make copies of it and make it available to everyone? Uh, Professor Seymour said, if I knew you were going to ask this question, I would not have uh, suggested that uh, they let you ask the question. Uh, but, and then he said in a more uh, serious tone that, uh, uh, I, I don't think a work of art needs to work towards world peace. I think any work of art, uh, by definition, brings a kind of peace with it. Painting brings a kind of uh, uh, peace, and a kind of uh, quiet, and a kind of uh, solace to those who uh, watch it. Uh, and I don't think that uh, uh, those who have tried to make one painting to represent world peace uh, have succeeded. You can't use symbolism in this way, uh, but I have uh, not produced a work that would fit the description that you have. <coughs> Moreover, I think that you can have such a painting only when there is world peace, not before. We have time for one last question. There's food upstairs and there's merriment to be had. Uh, 
استاد سیدونی ممنون از صحبت که من این سال مشخص بشه من شما این بود که در آثار شما مخصوصا در کار معماری تون علمانی از تفکیل معماری شرقی و غربی دیده میشه ولی در بعضی هاش این طور نیست و میخواستم بدونم که شما در انتخاب کارتون و مسیری که انتخاب میکنیم هم که در مورد آرانگاه نادشا صحبت کردیم در چه مواقعی این تردیم تردیم به بین دو فرهنگ و سلاح تونستیم و به دنبالش رفتیم و در چه مواردی به دنبال اون نرفتیم و نمودار یا سمبولیسمی که خودتون راجع به صحبت کردیم حاکم بوده در حد شما بنده میخوام از بکنم که ما به صورت یک جزئی از جامعه بزرگ بین المدری هستیم جدا از این جامعه بزرگ نیستیم و داریم پیشرفت میکنیم و داریم تقریبا همه روی زمینه جلو میدیم منطقه هر کشوری یه مشخصات فرهنگی، مشخصات اقلیمی، مشخصات محلی داره که باید بیگر و برگرد در آخر مماری به اینها توجه کرد. وقتی ما گردش میکنیم در ایران خودمون از نظر فرهنگی میبینیم که مردم ما یه نوع فرهنگ مخصوص خود شد دارن که عادت کردن دارن فرق بکنیم راجب خانهای قدیمی صحبت بکنیم خانهای قدیمی پیرونی داشتن اندرونی داشتن هر کدوم برای خودش کسی از خارج که می آمد به اندرونی حق دخالت یا وارد شدن یا دید نداشت در بیرونی این وزیرهایی میشود و این عادت و این فرهنگ هم تو پاورجان مونده تا امروز حالا که ما داریم میریم جلو و میبینیم که دیگه با اون عرض و طول ما نمیتونیم ساختمانه مسکونی بسازیم میبینیم که باید اجبارا این فرهنگ رو پیاده کنیم به دردوی که خانه هایی که ما می ساختیم یعنی زمانی که بنده اونجا کار می کردم و دوستان ما و همکاران ما کار می کردم ما سعی می کردیم که این خصلت رو این به اصلاح عادت رو و فرهنگ رو رعایت بکنیم کسی که وارد می شه دید روی قسمت خواب و انتیمه خونه نداشته باشه اون درسته که ما با هم دیگه یکیه ولی باز اون یه خود حالت بیرونی دیده بشه و بعد کسی که وارد قسمت پذیرایی میشه این فقط مهمانان اطراف خودش رو ببینه اون طرف رو نبینه و گاهی اوقات دیدیم که انقدر اگزاجره شده یعنی زیاد روی شده در این فکر که مهمان خانه اتاق سارون و مهمان خانه در غیر پذیرایی همیشه همطور بدون استفاده یک گوشه میفتاده برمیرد پس این یک موضوع مهمه دو این که انوائرمنت یا محیط زیست خیلی مهمه که ما کجا داریم زندگی امروزی مونه از نظر معماری تعیین تعمیم میکنیم آیا در امریکا هستیم؟ آیا در کانادا هستیم؟ آیا در نمیدونم اروپا هستیم؟ چه آب هوایی دارن؟ ایرانی ها از قدیم و رعیان به این مسائل توجه داشتن وقتی که ما را میریم در مناطق فارس تحت جمشید رو میبینیم نقش برجسته داریم داری به کاخ های تحت جمشید این نقشه برجسته ما از مت دو سه سانتیمتر بیشتر برجستگی ندارد چرا؟ 
برای اینکه آفتاب زندی که اونجا برقراره با همین دو سه سانتی متر اون ارزش تصویری شکل رو تعمیم میکنه کافیه در صورتی که در پاریس جلوی ارکتوکشی هم که را میدیم میدیم که اونجا نقش برجسته گذاشتن ولی مجبور شدن انقدر بیارن بیرون که دیگه از نقش برجسته که در بیارن یه مجسمه بشه چرا؟ برای اینکه هوا همویه آفتاب کم داریم و باید این خودشو نشون بده یا اینکه وقتی ساختمان منظر و مسکون میخواییم در انجام بدیم میدادیم یه تصبوی معماران ما کردن که خیلی قابل تحسین با اونی هست که فلات ایرانی فلات مرتفع به طور متوسط 600-700 متر از سطح دریا ارتفاع داره بنابراین با این ارتفاع ما میبینیم در خیلی از مناطق ایران زمستان های سرد داریم و چون نزدیک به خط استباه هستیم تا به سانه گرم برای اینکه این به جوابگو باشیم از نظر معماری آمدن چه کردم مناظر مسکونی رو به طرف جنوب ساختن و ایوان هم بذاشتن چرا توجه کردم به شرایط جغرافیایی آفتاب در تابستان با میل خیلی کم یعنی به صورت عمودی بیشتر تابش داره بنابرای این ایوان رو درست کردن که مانع از این بشه که آفتاب وارد خونه بشه در صورتی که همین آفتاب در زمستان به صورت زاوی عاده تابش داره و اینو این خاصیت جنوب ها خاصیت شرق و غرب نیست در اونجا ها آفتاب خیلی عذب میکنه مال جنوب میبینیم وقتی که به صورت حاده ما زاوی حاده تابش داره این نه تنها از ایوان مبور میکنه وارد خونه میشه اینا, اینا چیزایی چی مربوط به ایران یا در کانادا که ما آفتاب خیلی کم داریم میبینیم که برج های بزرگ ساختن تمام شیشه احتیاج به نور دارن احتیاج به آفتاب دارن شیشه لازم در صورت که همه شیشه در ایران یه چیز زایدیست اگر بخواهیم بذاریم باعث زحمت از نظر محیط زیست و از نظر شرط جغرافیه این این موضوع ایران بندم در کارهای خودم خیلی سعی کردم که این مسائل رو حفظ بکنم و خیلی جا با اکثر های بعضی از ایرانی های خودم که اولا معمار هستن یا دکتر طب هستن و اصحار نظر میکنن works of architecture, there's clearly a combination of uh, Eastern and Western motifs. In some of them, we do not see such a combination. Uh, when was it and how was it that you decided in some buildings this combination was necessary and uh, required? And when was it that you thought you could simply rely on uh, symbolism? Uh, the answer was that uh, we are part of uh, the global system. We are not separate from it. Uh, we are moving along with this uh, global movement. Uh, we are more or less all moving in the same direction. But at the same time, every culture, every country has its own culture, its own uh, geography, its own native habits. But yet, in, in uh, architecture, we must uh, take these factors into consideration. Iran, for example, has a culture of its own. Uh, from, uh, if you look at uh, traditional uh, houses, there was a separation between the outer and the inner. The, uh, the stranger did not have the right to look into the inner sanctum of the house. Uh, this it remained, this habit remained even today. Uh, although we don't build houses as large as we used to, uh, but that cultural disposition uh, has left this imprint even in houses that we build today. And we try to, in the houses we build, uh, with our colleagues to uh, take this cultural disposition into uh, account. 
for example, when you enter to these houses that we designed, you had no view of the inner sanctum of the house or the bedroom of the house if you were led to the place where the guests uh, were uh, entertained uh, from that room you had no view into any place else other than other guests into uh, that were there sometimes of course uh, we did this to, to the extreme and uh, in these cases then the guest room remained useless unless there were some guests who were uh, in, in it. Uh, the question of environment is also critical. We need to be cognizant of where it is that we live. What is the temperature? What kind of uh, humidity uh, does it have? Uh, Iranian architects from ancient times pay particular attention to this. All you have to do is look at Persepolis and you will see that its reliefs have no more than two or three inches uh, of height. If you compare this to the reliefs in Paris, for example, you realize that they are so big that they resemble a statue. Why? Because in Persepolis, in Fars, there was sun, and with the help of that sun, that three inch was enough to see it. In Paris, there was cloud, and they needed to make these reliefs much, much higher. Uh, <coughs> The other thing that we have to take into consideration is that much of Iran is in a plateau that is about 600 meters above sea level. Uh, that means we have hot summers and cold winters. Iranian architecture has take, traditionally taken very uh, careful, paid careful attention to this. Uh, in uh, houses, for example, uh, they built a long hall towards the north, uh, and, it, it, and in, these, in, in this way, when the sun came in, it would not uh, leave too much of an impact in the inner part of the house. Of course, in some parts of Iran, like uh, the Khuzestan province, when the, hot, when the sun is very, very hot, there's, there's no way to uh, stop it. Uh, uh, in Canada, for example, they built these long towers, the tall towers, and for them, uh, the use of glass is necessary. Uh, in Iran, the use of glass is useless and a source of trouble. I try to uh, take these factors into consideration, and that's why many physicians and some architects uh, criticize me. <laughs> and that's <laughs> Thank you.